hi there hello welcome to another video if you're new here i'm chi alia welcome welcome take a look around you just might like it here and if you do hit the subscribe button join the channel so today i'm going to be answering hard hitting questions from you guys just around software engineering my experiences life and much more so if you're here for it let's go now someone said are there cons to being a software engineer i haven't found one yet ha huh. i think there are cons or there are cons to being a software engineer i mean it's like everything there are pros and cons um for starters my i'm 26 my wrists are 40 my back is 62 so one of the big cons i would tell you is it can take a toll on your physical health if you're not careful because you're doing a lot of sitting down now i'm a little bit more conscious of this i'm making all my setup ergonomical you don't want to be in constant back pain so you can get stuff like standing desks this is a standing desk um i might do maybe a, a tour of my um working station in another video because you spend a lot of time on that uh space so you just kind of invest in it and trying to make it better for your health that's one con i did a whole video on that if you want to see it the pros and cons i will just put the link on the top here So I don't want to discourage anyone from pursuing this career because personally I think it's a great career. It has a lot of great perks. Like the saying goes, nothing good comes easy. It will test you, it will test your patience, it will test your resilience, especially when you just get started. Uh, no, that's a lie. Even after a couple of years in the career, it's going to test your patience. One thing I know for sure is that you have to genuinely just enjoy it or have a really strong reason that keeps driving you every day and even at that i still don't think it's fair to be like oh it's hard show me one occupation that is not hard even being a youtuber like it's not easy a lot of people from the outside would always look into it and be like oh it's just shooting a video but since i started my channel i've had a newfound respect for all youtubers out there because there's a lot that actually goes into any content that comes out and that's the same thing for software engineering as well if you're going to do it you're going to have to put in the work, you're going to have to put in the effort to develop that skill. And so I don't think it's particularly fair to be like, oh, is that hard? All fairness, show me a career that is not hard. Like you have to put in the work regardless of what field you're in. It takes work, it takes dedication to get to that level that you ideally want to get to. But at the end of the day, if you want a yes or no answer, is software engineering hard? Yes, it is. two things one i think that it's super creative uh you just get to build stuff from scratch you get to have this vision in your head um and see it come to life after a few weeks or a few months depends on how, how big that vision is the feeling i get after spending some time on a project or being stuck on a problem and then i finally solve that problem or get that project up and running Ah, oh, that's a wonderful feeling like I love that Two, money uh, I mean it pays well maybe not at the start at the start it pays normally uh, but over time it pays well there's a lot of potential to earn more over the years statistics will always show that the earning power over time for any software engineer like it just grows exponentially so there's a lot of potential there like I mean that's inspiring to anyone so <laughs> of course Math is not necessarily required for most software engineering tasks, uh, but since you're taking the class, it wouldn't hurt to pass the class. You know, a background in math is always good. You never can tell which company you're going to end up working for or whose systems you'll be building. Fundamentally, software engineering requires solving problems by writing code and designing software systems. Most engineers end up working on web or business applications, um, maybe front end or back end or both. So because of that, you need to be familiar with languages, you know, like Java, Python, JavaScript, C Sharp, um, depending on what language that your system is going to be using depending on what language your company uses there's also frameworks out there like you know react angular um and then you'd find the operation side of things containerization product like docker and the likes of it 
now in theory some of these may have roots in mathematical field but none of them actually require you to be proficient you know so like like i said before this is all very objective so depending on who you ask they would say it's fun some people would say it's not personally um it's fun it's like the project is fun depending on what project i'm working on i would find it fun i just love the feeling i get when you know i'm able to solve a problem that i have been stuck on for a while or just the feeling of when your vision comes to life you know something that you've been planning for a while and depending on the project like i would absolutely have a blast you know some projects are a real drag some are, are amazing to actually work on yeah i've actually been thinking about doing this uh it would be nice to just talk about applying for jobs um the interview process negotiation my current job i got through linkedin and maybe one interview process it wasn't very rigorous but yeah there are a few interviews i've done so it'll be good to you know just put that experience down in the video for you guys yes definitely this is going to be with the um, interview process video that i'm going to put together i just love to share my experience with you guys i would also share some of the stuff that i did and talk about that and how i got someone to you know notice me and offer me an interview because you just need to get that interview you know and if you have the skill set you would definitely get that job the thing i've learned is that linkedin gives you access to so many people that you wouldn't normally meet on a normal day you can reach out to people but i wouldn't misuse it though i think that just because you can reach people doesn't mean that they have to that they're entitled to giving you something like you know that entitlement is a no for me i applied for medicine as my first choice and software engineering as my second choice and i got software engineering i have been skeptical about it and i just want to ask why you didn't do medicine and decided on software engineering the person asking this question must have probably watched my video on um, how I switch careers. It was just a personal decision to do that. I finished my undergrad. I currently have a BSc in biochemistry um, and I just decided it wasn't for me, you know. My parents were like, when are you going to medical school? <laughs> and I was like, ah, I don't want to do that. I think I want to go into IT because I just didn't think that a hospital was a place I wanted to spend all my time in. There were also many other reasons why I just didn't want to do that. When making that decision, I sat back and thought to myself, what do I enjoy doing even if I'm not getting paid? And it was, it was IT. I have a BSc in biochemistry. I've been practicing website development. I would like to transition into that. Can you tell me what your process was? Did you get a new degree in tech? Before I got my master's degree, um, I had just started practicing on my own, Code Academy, just, you know, Udacity, the Free Code Camp as well. There are a bunch of great courses. Uh, so I was just practicing on my own and starting to learn how to do it. I started with web development, trying to create just a website out of HTML, CSS and JavaScript. And then, yeah, I just started building from there. I then moved to Melbourne to do my master's in IT, software development and design. And the funny thing is, I feel like I don't need that degree in my current career. A lot of people don't have a degree in tech. You know, they just transition, start their self-taught or they do like a boot camp. A lot of uh, big companies have removed their mandatory IT degree rules. And I can see that you're moving to Sydney as well. Do I feel like I needed that degree to get into my current career? No, but it's always good especially you know you're coming from nigeria to australia you know you would need i guess the student visa um so it would be good to do a degree and also if you want to work it's a good industry to be in here and on that note that is it for this video thank you for watching to the end uh sending in all your questions as well i'm always so happy to you know that people are watching the videos uh, and just responding to it i love being interactive with you guys and let me know if there's anything you want to ask feel free to send me a message on my social media don't forget to like subscribe and share this video give it a big thumbs up and i will see you in another video bye